Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to Youth Challenges. For the viewers that have just joined us, our topic today is on children and education. In particular, the various distractions that children face and the impact this has on their education and their life as a whole. Just before the break, uh, Mr. Yunus, I was about to ask a question about how can children, students, minimise the level of distraction in their lives? Uh, Faisan, I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't think it's within their powers because all of these years, as, as adults, as parents, what we generally do when the child is growing up, we'll give them the phone or the handheld to just quiet them up. But unfortunately, that sort of pattern just follows through life, especially when it gets into the teenage years, towards the penultimate years of education, and they never break through, break out of that. Do you understand? So I think it's for us as parents and older siblings to regulate that. Um, your, in your research, I remember reading something about the Promodro technique, if I, if I got it right. It's about how you break your education time into into bite size, maybe two and five minutes or so before you take a break. Maybe that's what we, we as parents need to do, is have a structure, uh, regulate the activities, have defined times for when they study, when they take a break, and hopefully they can come out of that uh, you know, vicious circle at the end. They just f constantly want to be on the console or any sort of technology that they're interacting with. To, to get that uh, excitement in their life. But, you know, as, as siblings and, all, and parents, we need to regulate that activity. And I think we'll be successful if we can somehow find a timetable to work with to regulate the kids. Definitely, and that is, that is good advice also for all the parents that are watching today. And that point actually leads me on very nicely to my next question. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to discuss a little bit is actually, this stems from a message I received on Facebook from a parent who said that as a parent, I found this really emotional. He said, as a parent, I fear that I am, I am, I'm failing my children. I feel that there is something more that I can do which can help them you know, be free from the distractions and to achieve more in their education. Now, I suppose the first thing I'd like to say, which is also what my response was, that firstly, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert in this area, mm -hmm. nor am I a professional in this area. However, the circumstances and in my own experience, what I can say is this appears to be the climate and the environment that kids are in today. It's not any one child, it's a lot of children, and this is just the age of modern technology, and that is what the actual problem is. And Although there are many things a parent can do, ultimately the cause is the invention and the progression of these technologies and these distractions. So what I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Yunus, is what can parents do more to assist their child to want to avoid these distractions and to be more motivated to actually dedicate that time to their education and to their self, to themselves and their personal development? Mm. Um, there's one word that I think kind of be very helpful to us as parents and that's reward and we nag our kids quite a bit um, and one of the things that I learned from my kids school I got a call uh, from one of my child's teacher and I was dreading it and they often call from a withheld number oh god it's, a, it's the school again <laughs> do you know what I'm saying so but, you know, in this instance, it was, it was the science teacher. And she said, hey, Mr. Eunice, you know, I thought I'd put a call in because, you know, your son's done very well. I've realised that he's not goofing around so much. He's spending more time basically paying attention. Uh, and one of the things I learned from that, and she said, look, it's all well and good me calling you and telling you that, you know, well, he's been horrible, he's been distractive and all of those things and you going back and then nagging him. But at the same time, I feel as a teacher, I should really give some positive feedback to you as well. So she, when she called me before, it was a case of a complaint, you know, he's been distractive, blah, blah, blah. So that then 
uh, basically mot motivated me to go back and have a go at my child and nag him. But then this time she called and uh, she basically said, oh, hey, Mr. Yunus, you know what? He's done really well. Yeah. He's been concentrating. He's not been so dr distractive and so on and so forth. And uh, I think it's my duty as to tell you that. And that then motivated me to go home and reward my kid. And I said to my son, well done, really proud of you. What would you like? Let's go for a milkshake, my local uh, dessert place. Uh, and that really helped. Do you understand? Know so I, I think if, if, if your listeners or your viewers, if they could take away one thing, it's reward. If you could also reward the child when they are taking positive acts or actions, or if they've you know, done better than before, uh, I think that might actually work. And I've seen it, in, even in my parenthood, I, I've seen that when you reward a child, they tend to be a bit more um, intuitive and tend to, be, tend to listen to you rather than ignoring you. You know, I'm very, very glad that you, you've made that point now mm -hmm. because, you know, one thing which appears to be a common theme in, on this show is we talk a lot about what parents can do better and should do better. And we talk about many ills of some certain societies and cultures. And I've had guest speakers come before who are, who are a lot more uh, knowledgeable in, in that field. You know, for example, we have Imam uh, Mulana Ahmad Karim Sahib who comes along on our show as a guest speaker as well. And their day-to-day -day job is, you know, discussing with parents and, and fellow members of the community, whatever kind of worries or issues they have. And so, so the experience in, in this field is, is much more than mine, let's say. And one thing he mentioned in one of our previous episodes was that in our culture, we were talking about Islamic studies at this very moment in time. And, and what he said was in our culture, the concept of reward is missing. If I call someone, I'm now quoting him, if I call someone and say, you know, your child was misbehaving in, in Madrasa today, I know for a fact that that kid will get told off. But if I call someone and say, your child done really well, he's memorized this entire surah, this entire ayah, and I'm very happy with him, the parent will take that and be happy, yes, this is good, but that won't reach the child. Or sometimes it might be seen as, all right, yeah, but he's supposed to be doing that. Mm. And the concept of rewarding a child or celebrating achievements is actually somewhat missing, um, I would say, from the majority. And this actually reminds me of a particular scenario where when I completed uh, college, um, on results day, went to pick up the results, got the results, and first you go home because you want to tell everyone, hey, look, this is what I did, this is what I got. And you'd hope that your parent will be proud of you. You'd hope that everyone around you would be like, oh, you're not well done. We saw the hard work you put in and now you've got the outcome. So naturally, me and my group of friends, we all said, let's go home and then, then we'll meet up later to you know, celebrate that we've got through college. One mate in particular said, all right, well, you guys go and then meet me after. And I thought to myself, oh, my, I got bad grades. I said, did you get bad grades? And he goes, I mean, not really. I said, let me have a look. And I looked. And when I say his grades were outstanding, we're talking A's and B's, nothing short of that. And so his grades were outstanding. And I said to him, so what's, what are you worrying about? And he goes, well, you know, I'll go home and show these grades, but what's the point? I said, why is that? And he goes, my dad's going to focus on the one module or the one subject I didn't get an A in. And I'd probably get told off for it. So I'm happy with these and, and that's fine. You guys go and then we'll meet later. And that's something which, which I would say it's moments like those you don't forget because it shows what the other person had to go through. It's something that you were privileged enough not to have. And mm -hmm. when you see someone else has that. And, you know, surprisingly, that is quite common in many cultures. Um, so I would definitely uh, re-emphasize your point, Mr. Yunus, about reward and just celebrating achievements. I would also add that Leading by example is fundamental and it's important. Now, my younger brother, I come back to him again. There's one particular moment where he had an exam on a Monday and this was a Friday evening. And I said to him, why are you always on your phone? 
I didn't proceed to finish my sentence, but he interrupted me saying, but why are you? Now, the truth is I was on my phone and I was on social media at that time, just pointlessly flicking through a bunch of, you know, short football clips or whatever I was doing. And although I told him off for that, the truth is that I wasn't in that moment in time leading by example. So what it is, is I think children, especially kids, especially, they do look at what their parent or their siblings or, you know, whoever's around them is doing. And if they have a role model or someone who they can look at and be like, well, okay, that is what I should be doing. That definitely, in my view anyway, would assist with minimizing that distraction for the child. Mm. And do you have any views on that, Mr. Yunus? You know what, absolutely, Fizan, that is, you've kind of, uh, that's the nub of the point, isn't it? Basically, is leading by example and your kids will do what you do. If you sit there 24 seven on the phone, social media flicking away, that's what your kids are going to learn. Um, so what I would suggest we do as a, as a uh, human race, so to speak, is basically be mindful that, you know, everything that we do is gonna wash down onto our kids. What the kids are around us, not necessarily our kids, but nieces and nephews, do you follow? So I suppose as adults and our older siblings, we need to, be mindful of our actions uh, because ultimately that's what we are we are teaching them you know it's all right to sit there waste time on the phone and things like that so I, I think for example personally I would suggest that as adults as parents when we get home put that phone away you know what just put it away in the cupboard if anybody wants to get hold of you they can call the landline at home you yeah. understand because I think you're right, you know, you're just leading by example. And uh, that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to give them a bad example, you know? Yeah. Definitely, and, and that is really, really important. And another thing I would stress, and it is, you know, we've, we've done an episode which purely focused on parents and their relationship with children, because that moment in time, we had a guest speaker um, here with us on the sets who, was quite learned in, in parent and child relationship. Um, he was a therapist. And what it is, is there is a, a lack of communication as well. And this is more common in the South Asian communities. We're talking mm. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, you know, that region where there is a lack of open communication. Sometimes um, it's because the parent is really busy or sometimes it's because you know they don't see the importance of it or understand the benefit this will have on their child but what we always try to do is encourage open communication just as you mentioned that example as you were driving over here mm. those few words that you said to your nephew about that house potentially has enough influence to direct their mind and you know, navigate it to suggest that that comes from hard work. Okay. You can put it in, you can achieve it. And that is what we refer to as communication. You know, a lot of, a lot of people in that position could have been driving the car. The kid in the back could have said something and could have continued driving the car and not made any comment or acknowledged exactly, it. Yeah. And, and that's where communication comes in. If, you, if, if as a parent you tell your child that this is something, or even as a sibling, if you tell your younger sibling that, look, this is something that you can achieve, or what is it that's, you know, even if you just ask, what is it that's stopping you? What's worrying you? Mm -hmm. Why is it you're not, you're not focused? And it's just, it makes a really big difference. And um, a hadith in particular I'd like to reiterate is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the believers should acquire knowledge so that they can impart it acquire knowledge so that mm -hmm. they can impart it. In fact, this is also a sadhka jariya. So even after one's departure from this world, if they've benefited someone else with a bit of knowledge, with a bit of information, which then they used or they passed on, that is a sadhka jariya on that part. Now, when the Prophet upon him said this, it didn't mean, say for example, myself or yourself as an adult, We've got a bit of information. Let me tell my fellow brother. 
hey, look, this is this. It also means you can extend that to children. Mm. You can tell children, look, education, you know, although you might be in school and you're thinking, I think many students probably think this at some point, even I did. How's algebra going to benefit me in my future? How is learning about another religion in, in religious studies going to benefit me? I'm Muslim, why am I learning about Judaism? What, you know, why am I learning about Hinduism? Mm. And these are questions which kids do have. And, you know, that is knowledge. And understanding and having a breadth of knowledge will always benefit you. You know, if, you, if you've studied Judaism and then you meet um, someone of that faith, you can have a very learned conversation about religion. And it's just to help a child understand the importance of the education they're receiving, of this stage of their life. That communication is very necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, what would your, what would your views be on that? You know, Fazan, basically, I think it boils down to world view. Do you understand? And as parents, um, depending on what sort of life you've had, how you've achieved what you have achieved, that's what you're going to partake to, to your child, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, some people are successful in business. Other people are basically just working retail. And uh, that's what their kids learn. Do you follow what I'm saying? So basically come back to, it's all about leading by example. And those two, you know, if your viewers went away today from this uh, talk we're having, if they, if they took two things, one thing I would say, lead by example, and secondly, reward. Okay, reward those kids. Show them that, you know, if they achieve the right thing, if they've got the goals, they can basically get X, Y, Z. And hopefully that will culture them into sort of working towards goals. And that's what we need to do, just have a goal. And I think a lot of the young people tend not to have a goal. They tend to be lost. Mm. They tend no, don't know what they want to do. And unfortunately, um, maybe I'm making a sweeping generalization, but you know, with, within the South Asian community, there's been a subset of people that are very, very successful, highly educated, uh, highly, what do you call it, motivated uh, professionals. But then there is, by and large, which I think, I don't have the stats to, to, to hand, but I think more people of South Indian origin, South Asian origin, apologies, uh, tend to have a different sort of background, tend to be more manual work, do you understand? And, you know, our kids, they might not have the role models, they might not have, as uh, growing up, and, you know, just looking at my world, when I was growing up, uh, my, old, my, my father didn't have a professional job as such. He was a labourer and he did various, various other job, driving jobs and some extended family as well, my uncles and so on and so forth. But what do you aspire to? Is that what life is about? Just basically driving for a living? Do you follow? And if you look at some other successful communities, maybe um, uh, the, the native uh, British communities, they might have uncles a neurosurgeon another uncle that's an engineer, do you follow? This is what they see, this is what they aspire to. So unfortunately, our youth, they might not have that, do you follow? Um, so that, unfortunately, is something that you and I can't change, no matter how much we talk about it. But I would say the most important thing is that example, lead by example. Definitely, and, and that is very important. And, mm. you know, just as you were saying that, a thought that occurred to me is, it's also very, very important for children to have an ambition, to have a goal. Mm. Um, you'll find in this day and age, a lot of students will finish college and have no idea mm. what they want to do once they're finished. They don't know whether they want to go to uni. They don't know whether they want to pursue a career. If so, what career do they want to pursue? Now, these are all questions which ideally a child should be able to discuss with their parent, parents, mm. you know, What's out there for me? What can I do? That's the trouble, uh, Faisan, and I, I think sometimes that's where uh, people of South Asian origin tend to fall afoul. Because, you know, if they had an uncle that was a barrister, an uncle that was a, I don't know, a NASA engineer or something, then they can talk to them and then aspire to that. Do you follow? Uh, you can't aspire to something that you don't see. Do you follow? That's the trouble. Don't get me wrong, there are young people that who 
naturally have a certain inclination and they want to do something and they achieve it as well. I mean, there's some examples in our family as well uh, where they always wanted to do certain thing and they've achieved it, do you follow? Uh, but by and large, that isn't the experience for everybody. Uh, if they come from a deprived, deprived background, um, they might not have an extended family. They might not have role models. Do you follow? Definitely. So, Mr. Yunus, we have unfortunately come to the end of our program. And this has been a very, very enjoyable discussion for myself. Likewise, likewise. I've and enjoyed it. I've enjoyed definitely it. enjoyed it. And I hope the viewers have too and I hope that there are some key takeaways that the viewers can take both parents and children and teenagers I hope they didn't get too offended by our show today <laughs> um, but yeah until next time dear viewers take care of yourselves of your family of your loved ones and from me and Mr Yunus and the team at Ikra TV Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh